what innovations do you foresee and are you most excited for? I'm actually most excited for the the transformation that uh, I would expect in uh, music production. As soon as we turn to full 360 immersive formats, we can forget everything we know about music production because um, every trick and, uh, uh, and, and workflow that we learn to adopt for creating music in stereo might not work anymore, might not be necessary or might not give us the desired effect. If immersive audio is uh, then accepted widely in the music production community, then this must have an impact on the music itself, like the transition from mono to stereo. I think uh, the majority of music productions that we have today are deliberately created for stereo and uh, composed for stereo and arranged for stereo. If you start with the, the same material, with the same composition and try to like up mix to immersive formats, then you might, for example, end up with um, um, not enough sounds because you have way more space to, to fill with your sounds. And then um, the ideas of uh, uh, how to utilize compression, dynamic compression, how to utilize the EQ, this is all different when you have the, the full surrounding space. Mm, very interesting point. I hadn't considered that. The, you know, you check your mix in, in mono yeah. because some bad things happen when yeah. you go to yeah. mono. There's one speaker now trying yeah. to recreate everything. Yeah. Yeah. And when you spread that to stereo, it's, it's a bit easier. You can, instead of using an EQ cut or compressing the dynamic range of an instrument, you can just pan it over to this yeah. way yeah. and it, it creates that space. But you're saying now that we expand the, the canvas even more we may be able to mix with exactly. wider dynamic ranges. Exactly. And that may have implications yeah. on the tonality of yes, instruments, yes, yes. which is something that's kind of plagued music for a long time, in many people's opinion, is the compression, the over-compression, some would say. And so perhaps yeah. this uh, widening of the canvas is our answer. <laughs> <laughs> this might be one one beautiful answer because it, it was uh, lots of, of those production tricks developed in the past decades were uh, meant to just make space for one more sound and let us hear everything. But then if you have uh, this huge canvas, way bigger, then it's easier to, to have space for all sounds to be heard. This is kind of similar, not, not the same, but maybe a bit kind of similar what we experience in, in film sound production, where a, the sounds today are typically created for five channel. As soon as we down mix to stereo, we might get issues because uh, then the, the dialogue might get lost a bit and so on and so on. This incompatibility of, uh, of uh, formats is something that I would expect for, for immersive. So um, a music production that has been composed for immersive formats uh, and has been produced in immersive formats would then suffer kind of from stereo playback. Stereo through speakers, I see what you mean. Stereo in, in headphones, through speakers. Yes, we could yes, just go to course. binaural, yes, but yes, yes. in speakers, it's still, it's still stereo. Right? We, we, yeah. we can argue about the transition from mono to stereo in music production and uh, the, the early uh, days of stereo where uh, in pop music, they made different mixes and then uh, maybe like with the, the, the majority of the, the Beatles releases, mm -hmm. for example, the, the main format has still been mono yeah. and then they created stereo as a secondary uh, release. And then w we might argue which version suits the music better. I've heard many argue that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>